this to the Bible now because the Bible is the perfect word of God. And if it's not in the Bible, don't believe it. If it's in the Bible, it's truth. It was written by God through men. And so I'm going to take this down. Dano's going to cut it, and we're going to get some Bible stuff up here. Okay. And now. Okay. Um, we're back, and I'm going to give you guys a quick uh, breakdown on basically a leading up to this abomination of desolation that I'm going to show you in the Bible. But before we get to that, I want to give you guys a couple more little pieces to a puzzle because I'm going to bring the puzzle together for you towards the end. And right now, this is an important piece of the puzzle. Um, on the dollar bill, we have a pyramid and there's an eye on that pyramid and this is it right here. And it says, Novus Ordo Seclorum. And it's in Latin, I believe it means New Secular Order. And um, this is, a lot of people call it the all-seeing eye of God. Um, from what I understand and what, I, what I've checked out about it, it is the all-seeing eye of Horus from ancient Egypt. And Horus is Lucifer. So, I'm going to show you what this is. I'm going to give you a representation of this that the Lord has let me see. It's hidden right in the same hieroglyph. And I'm going to define what this is for you. And then in a little while, when we go back to the hieroglyph, you will understand how this plays in to the abomination of desolation. Okay, so here we go. Here's an image right here. I'm going to let you see. I'm going to let Dan get over there. You, are we there? We're good. Okay, this is an image of half the face of a devil. I'm going to start right here at a little horn right here. There's a little horn. Okay, this goes up to like a really big horn like this. Comes down and then comes right here and goes right into his eyebrow right here. This is the eyebrow. And now here's his eye right here. Now, he's got a very big nose, a big bulbous nose. And here's the nose goes down right here. And then his lips begin right here. There's his lips, right? That all represents his mouth. This is the top of the lip right here, and the line between his lips, and there's his bottom lip. Now this goes down to his chin. Now, I'm going to move this paper over just a little bit, and I'm going to show you his other eye. This is his other eye, right there. So here's one eye, and here's his other eye. The eye that you are looking at is the representation of the all-seeing eye of Lucifer. So now I'm going to go ahead and slide this away and I'm going to keep moving it and you're going to see that the other eye of the devil is actually representative of this entire face of a child and this eye of the child that really belongs to the child is the other eye of the devil. Now as I move this over further, you're going to see that the top of the child's head goes like this. And this is actually like a horn that is wrapped around the head of this kid. And what this represents is this child is the eye and the ear of the devil. Okay, now we're going to leave this. We're going to pull this down. I'm going to read to you from the Bible. We're going to put the Bible up here and we're going to start checking out um, how all this translates biblically. And then we're going to go straight for that hieroglyph. And we're going to decrypt the hieroglyph. And when I started this, I told you that I was going to show you that that hieroglyph had everything to do with the bombings on the money, which is impossible, right? Okay, we're going to cut and put some more stuff up. Now, sorry that we cut there. I, I wanted to uh, actually take this pyramid and I'm going to slide this eye right here, right over the eye of the child. So I can put it together for you. So that child's eye is the other eye of the devil, and it has everything to do with the pyramids. And um, this is just going to come together in just a little while to where you're just going to be amazed what the Lord's showing you. Okay, so once again, the eye on the pyramid equals the eye of the child that's in the head of the devil. And there we go. Now I'm going to grab the Bible and we're going to come back. Here we are. We're back. And I've got the Bible up here. You, you can go get the NIV Bible. You can go get King James, New King James. You can go get whatever version of the Bible you want. 
but I pretty much say the same thing. Um, we're going to look at Matthew 24, and it, it deals with the temple's destruction is foretold. Now, a quick footnote, when Jesus was talking to the Pharisees, he told the Pharisees, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Well, the Pharisees said, you know, it took however many years to, to build the temple. How can you do that? And they didn't understand that Jesus was talking about his body because after he was crucified and his temple was destroyed, he rose again on the third day in three days, just like he said he would. Now, this is dealing with the destruction of the temple and it's talking about the end of the world. And, and, I, and I'm going to read to you. It's going to take me a minute, but I'm going to read it the best I can. This is uh, King James. So it says, And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when these things shall be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world. Okay, here we go. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and shall deceive many. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. These things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended, and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then the end shall come. Now here we go. This is what I was called specifically from the Lord to bear witness to and to show it to you. He says, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. And then he says, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let them which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his own house. Neither let him that is in the field return back to, to get his clothes. And he goes on to say in this passage that these are the days of vengeance and this is when things are going to get really bad. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull out another page from the Bible and this is another Bible and I'm just going to read it to you because it also deals with the destruction of the temple and, and I want you to hear how Jesus spoke these words in the book of Luke. He's talking about the same thing. He says, for the days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment around you and surround you and close you in on every side and level you and your children within you to the ground. Okay, when you destroy a building, you destroy something, you level it to the ground. Now watch this. And then they will not leave in you one stone upon another because you did not know the time of your visitation. Jesus is saying the time's coming when they, and I'm going to show you who they are, they will not leave one stone on top of another in you. So you are the temple and I'm going to bear witness to the destruction of the temple. Okay, I'm going to take this Bible down right now. And I'm going to grab a couple more pictures and we're going to start right back up. We're going to start right here again. We're going to just recap the sheep. Okay, once again, I'm bearing witness to the destruction of the temple. Jesus said in the book of Luke, and they, they will not leave in you one stone.